Today could be the day that we kickstart our championship season. We have five opponents in the month of October, all of which are around about us in the league. Derby, Charlton, Stoke, Millwall, Reading. You can see Reading are right underneath us in 17th. Derby are right underneath them in 18th. And above us, Charlton, Millwall and Stoke are all on 15 points in 10th, 11th and 12th. So between all five opponents and eight divisions, eight divisions, and eight positions in the division is two points. This is the time to go on a run of form to build up a head of steam to allow a potential dip in form over the busy Christmas period. So we hope, we hope, we hope, we hope that today we can get some good points. We'll play Derby, probably sim Charlton as they came up with us from the league below and we've already, you've already seen me play Charlton previously on the channel or in this save. Then play Stoke midweek and either Millwall or Reading, depending on what the league table looks like at that moment in time. So Derby first, away from home. And from there, we'll see how it goes. Charlie Barnett back to scoring ways in the last episode. A couple of uh, slight issues with uh, stamina there. Not massive issues, but perhaps it gives the opportunity for a couple of players that haven't really had the chance to play much football so far this season to get a crack of the whip. So we'll throw Fleming and Andrew in just to, if anything, try and help boost their sharpness and morale to ensure that when we call upon them in future, they actually make the difference for us. Lewis Potter can have a rest, as can Elder. But the rest of the side, and maybe Doherty out for Wallace, the rest of the side is going to be as you see it. And hopefully it'll be good enough to get victory away from home at Pride Park. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed this save. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of this first season at championship level. You saw their starting lineup a moment ago with Rooney in the midfield. Let's jump straight to the action. Derby are having a rotten season in real life. And they're performing slightly better in this save, but still in the lower half, lower third even, of the table. Jordan I back to... Sh oh. It's well, well worked so far. So they are a side that have the capability to be better than where they are. Burn back to Jordan Ibe. A nice little flick to Graham Shinney. He's run straight into your device. He's run straight back into Graham Shinney. Annoyingly, can Fleming get there? He can't. Rooney. Rundog himself not able to get past your device, who stood firm so far. Shinny back to Burn, and here's Jordan Ive. Derby really putting the pressure on at the beginning of the game, and Jordan Ive has broken free, and a little ball roll has done me, and it's always those little bloody ball rolls that kill me off. Lovely goal from Jordan Ive, though. Take nothing away from it. Derby lead by a goal to nil at Pride Park. Early doors. Not really too sure why he's gone with the old Spanish archer, but clearly thinks he's Fernando Torres, channeling that old Liverpool link. Jordan Ive firing it into the top. Oh, just a ball roll kills me off. So bad at defending those. So effective as a skill move on FIFA. And it's worked again for the AI here. Derby County lead by a goal to nil. Device across to Burke. I'm going to lift that. Oh my God, Aston Villa have conceded and are losing. Title was yesterday's episode. League title already decided. As Aston Villa had won 10 of their opening 11. That's a lovely ball. Can Pinto get there? He can't. Matt Miazga clears it away. Derby, not Derby. Uh, Aston Villa won 10 of their opening 11. Speaking of Derby, in real life I mentioned they're having a torrid season. They've played 18 games in the Championship so far this year. They've won two of them. They sit 21st, no 22nd I think actually, in the Championship table. So they're not too better off, too much better off positionally in the league so far in this save than they are in real life. Although their points tally is better. Just 13 points in real life after 18 games and what 14 after however many games we've played so far this year. In this save, Jordan Ibe. Oh no, he's killed me off. Juggling the ball on the top of his head and Jordan Ibe makes it 2-0 Derby. They might well be going above us in the league if they win this and they've given themselves a great margin. We are, of course, on the back of that defeat to Preston to end yesterday's episode with a 3-0 loss. And now we're 2-0 down to uh, to press the north end. But Jordan Ive juggles it on the top of the head with his first touch. Off the, off the shoulder, onto the top of his head and volleyed into the back of the net. Can you believe it? Oh, twice off the top of his head and then a swivel left-footed volley. That's a 
Just a remarkable once-in-a-lifetime goal for Jordan Ibe, and we are 2-0 down at Pride Park. Unbelievable. A skill goal. Unintentional, but still a great skill goal for Jordan Ibe. He's second, Derby second, and we really are not on fine form to start the day, are we? Waghorn. No! Poor! Save and a half. It was Rooney on his left foot. George Long keeping our dignity intact for now. We could have been 3-0 down before half-time. Really well struck by Waza. Shinny with the delivery. That's poor. So is Wallace's clearance, unfortunately. And Rooney again involved. Forsyth! Long with a save. Bloody Forsyth on the... Potentially on the score sheet. Shinny short to Jordan I Tackled by Wallace. Can we get away from Ibe here? He's pretty quick. He's tugging at my shirt. He's going to get there, isn't he? Just as I was about to play the pass forward to Charlie Barnett. This has been, well, on the back of what was arguably the worst result of the season so far at the end of yesterday's episode to what has arguably been the worst first half of the season so far. Here against Preston. Oh, sorry, here against Derby after the Preston game. Andre Wisdom inside to Jozviak, and it might even get worse. It's not... It might even get worse, although there's barely any time left. I just need to get the ball out of play. Yeah, half-time. Oh, Jesus, pick your game up, Chez. That's a good ball over. Device just gets to it first. Honeyman with a sharp turn, but not a quick pass to follow. The quick turn. I get lucky. Devices stay forward. Charlie Barnett spins well, driving into the box. The youngster needs to find a teammate here. Has one. Wilkes arrives. Wilkes powers it home. And we're off again, up and running for this episode. Back in the game at 2-1, seven minutes into the second half, through our number seven, who I have wanted more from in played games in the past couple of episodes, and finally starting to deliver. Did score a late equaliser for us against Cardiff in an interactive match sim game yesterday, but finally starting to produce in played games, perhaps, Malik Wilkes now, and I definitely need him to do so on a more regular basis. Back in the game, can we go from our worst ever first half performance to our best ever second half performance? I hope so. We may well need to if we're to draw or win this game. Here's Holmes off the bench for Derby. Jack Marriott also off the bench for Derby. Two attacking changes for them as they try and get their lead back again or extend their lead back to two goals again, should I say. Malik Wilkes should keep that in and has done well to do so. And actually, just inside here and play Wallace in. He could turn and find a teammate who's found Andrew and Honeyman. Honeyman with the space for the shot. Oh, crashing back off the bar. And the cross back in is terrible looking for Charlie Barnett. George Honeyman so unlucky. So close to an absolute crackerjack of a goal to equalise. Still with 25 minutes to play. They've come down this right-hand side of their attack a lot in this game. They've definitely isolated and noticed the fact that we've rotated the left-hand side of our side because we've got a weaker left mid and a weaker left back in this game and all of their play, all of their best play, all of their goals have come down that side with Jordan Ibe who now has a hat-trick and they do have their two-goal lead back again. Jordan Ibe is single-handedly seeing us off. Manual into Pinto. Short there to Honeyman. I've brought Scott on up top. I moved Barney out wide. I'm going to try and get creative with Charlie and hopefully someone else can provide the goals. Fleming delivers it in towards the middle, but Jordan Ibe is in the way. I'm making a change now. Oh, how I miss Josh McGuinness's goal from corners. It's hit that very well there, Malik Wilkes. I'll try again. Come on, Jordi, win this header. Oh, cleared off the line by Byrne. It's not meant to be today. Not on this game. Not on this occasion. Oh, dearie me. Ten minutes to go. It's 3-1 to Derby still. And everything we've tried in this game, it's not going to work. We are destined to lose. Into Rooney. And Marriott. Back to Rooney again. Through the gap. Jozviet is in... Oh, and Long denies them a fourth. <sighs> I've resigned myself to defeat already. There's not enough time for us to get two goals. We could perhaps get one and lessen the deficit. In the RTG we did last year with Cambridge, we missed out on the playoffs 
in the first season just. And we oh, missed out on promotion in the playoffs in the first season just. And then oh, season two, we very nearly got... We very nearly finished in the relegation zone. Oh, we were threatened with a relegation for the first half of the year. And I have a funny feeling this second season at Hull, even though we did get promotion at the first t attempt on this occasion, it looks like this second season at Hull is going to be something similar to that second season at Cambridge, at least the beginning of it. A fully deserved match ball by Jordan Ibe. That second goal was just simply stupendous. And I didn't deserve anything from that game, to be fair. Leeds win. Back to winning ways for them. Aston Villa didn't see their results. Ay, ay, ay. I can't believe that Jordan I've got. I really can't. Right, up next, Charlton in two weeks' time after an international break. And then Stoke after that. Right, let's sim this Charlton game. And hopefully <laughs> get three points. We'll try. And we will succeed. Charlie Barnett with the winner in the 71st minute after George Honeyman gave us a first minute lead. We will take that. Fleetwood battered again by Preston. Four goals to nil on this occasion. Fleetwood still rock bottom of the table on a single point. They are as bad as Aston Villa are good. Because Villa have won 12 of their opening 13. Pretty remarkable at the top and the bottom. I think we already know who's going to win the title, and we already know who's going to finish bottom. First and 24th are already decided, but the rest of the league is still up for grabs. A win there will do us the world of good. Let's jump now into the game against Stoke, who are there or thereabouts around us in the mid-table. Certainly a winnable game. Let's see if we can't go and get that victory. Stoke line up with Adam Davies in goal. I think they've got five at the back. Vimmer, Martins, Indy and James Chester who actually might be formerly of Hull, actually, James Chester, I think. I might be I might be wrong. I think James Chester played for Hull. He did for four years, from 2011 to 2015. Five years. James Chester was a Hull City centre-back. Now at Stoke here, another former player. Hull have had a number of players that have come and played for them throughout the years and moved on. High player turnover, it seems, at the club. It's probably to do with the yo-yoing between Premier League, League One, and... Uh, and the championship, but yikes, I can't get there. But Stoke have been, well, stuck in the championship for the past couple of seasons since their relegation back down from the top flight. They'll be hoping for a better time of things this season here in this save, but they're certainly not doing too much impressing so far. They were 15th, I think, to start this game. We're there or thereabouts, just above them, I think. Hopefully... Hopefully, we can stay above them and by a margin as well if we're able to get a victory here. Bruno Martins Indy sent to ground by Barney there. And hey, look, on the overlap, on the left hand side, King Lewis! Ah, Potter. Good save, keeper. Well done. We'll stay at 0 0. Ah, oh, I was so confident that was going to go in. Might cause us some problems. Back into Brown. Oh, hello. Fancy flick. Nice one, too, though. And onside here, Brown. Back to Joe Allen, who's back in a central role after taking that corner. And Smith could deliver a cross. Does. That's going to be 1-0, isn't it? No, it's not. Brown knew he needed to just get a slight touch on it to get it to find that far corner. But too slight a touch. And it's gone past that far corner. Should be 1-1 in this game. But no goals yet. Into Pinto. Forward to Charlie Barnett. Pinto's coming again. These two haven't linked up properly in the past couple of episodes. Well, certainly yesterday's episode as well at all. But given some free space and a chance on that left foot, Barnett will score. That's a very good goal. A very good goal. Well taken. Pinto to Doherty. It's he that feeds through Barnett. You see the, the little jink of movement there. He went one way, then went the other, but took an extra step to the left just to work a little bit more space away from Bruno Martins Indy. And that's what opened up the opportunity to hammer it home on his left foot, which he has duly obliged in doing. His fourth goal of the championship season. And Barnett is finally starting to tick over. In the championship, goals starting to come and hopefully points and wins with them. Overlapping run from the defender. He's not going to use him. Preciado will. Is he onside here? He is, Timon. Device again. Heads behind for a Stoke corner. Pressure from this 
near side is quite unrelenting from Stoke in this game so far. And Preciado does have his goal. The man at the near post decided he wasn't going to get there, so he didn't try. And then it changed player for me, and I couldn't react in time. Was it Charlie Barnett at the near post? I think it might have been the number nine, the striker. Yeah, it was. He decided against it. I couldn't react in time with anybody else. And Preciado does have an equaliser here for Stoke. This time, Stoke man just getting the right amount of purchase on the ball. Brown too little. Harold Preciado just enough. Preciado. It's loose. But Joe Allen recovers it and dinks it forward. Brown out to Smith. Elder trying to close him down. We go backwards probably. And inside, John Obi Mikel. Oh, what a ball. Preciado. It's 2 1 Stoke. They've completely turned it around. Might well head in hands there, George Long. Unbelievable. Two goals in quick succession from the same man. That cross from John Obi Mikel was so good, as was the run. Outside the boot finish. We've seen Barnett do that quite more impressively than that, but that's exactly what it needed there from Preciado into the bottom corner. Oh, he's accurate so far today, isn't he? How old Preciado? That is his fifth goal. Fourth and fifth goals of the season for Preciado here. Well, hopefully we can get the fourth and fifth goals of Charles Barnett's season then in this game. He's had his fourth. We just need to get that next one now, and that'll bring us back level at 2-2. Will we get it before half time? Maybe. Lewis Potter looking to drive around the outside. Stops, goes again, delivers it. Corner. We might yet get the goal. Your device is going to be there or thereabouts. Josh Emanuel's underneath it. He didn't get enough of a purchase on the ball there. And that's to be 2-1 to Stoke at half-time. Smith. Down the right. Back to John Obi Mikel. Smith again. Oh, nicely done. Mikel, great delivery. Josh Emanuel flicks away. Joe Allen with the block. Oh, hello. Fancy flick. Mikel. Smith could cross again, doesn't. Lewis Potter with the tackle. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting flashbacks to the Derby game. I'm getting real flashbacks to the Derby game. Please don't score a third. Stoke. I feel more confident in this game of getting something out of it than I did against Derby. Keen Potter should keep that in. And Charlie Barney is there. And oh, isn't quite tall enough to throw out that leg to turn that home. So close to an equaliser. Given away. Wilkes to Pinto. That was a terrible first touch, but we've kept possession. Here's Emmanuel. Just lift it, looking for Wilkes. Can't find him. Emmanuel looked for him on the floor. Find Barnet instead, actually. Good footwork. Pinto. Lewis Potter looking for Barnet. No! Oh, woodwork again. Woodwork again. Clean. Scooped out to Smith. Jesus, what a game's going on at Brentford at the minute. 3-2 there between them and Middlesbrough. Here's Lewis Potter. I'd love to make this 3-2 to Hull. Here at the KCON. Keep that in, please, Elder. And Charlie Barnett's made a good run. He's onside. And arriving here is Pinto. And again. No! Oh, he's tried to play to Lewis Potter, not to Greg Doherty. Oh, I'm done. I'm actually done. He was in. That was the equaliser. Just waiting to be scored. McLean, I'm worried about them going and scoring a third now. Please win this, Joshua. Well done. Get to that, please, Yordi. Not well done. Now to Timon. Back to Thompson. Still eight minutes to go here. Still time to turn it back round. Thompson. McLean. Nice tackle. It's fallen to Thompson again. McLean. No! It's 3 1 Stoke. That's game over. <laughs> We're in a relegation scrap. We're in a relegation scrap, boys, this season. I don't think there's any shying away from that right now. Bar into Doherty. Forward to Barnett. Nice turn. Dave Gunn is forward here with me. If only that ball had found Doherty earlier on, it would have. I'm sure we would have made it 2 2 there. Just not getting the luck so far in this division, are we? Really struggling to get going in this championship season. This was the episode where I thought, hello, we're playing a number of teams that have had a similar start to the year to us. We should hopefully be able to get some good results today. And actually, it's been, so far, the worst episode 
to date for a points haul. Two defeats and one draw. Sorry, two defeats and one win. Three points from a possible nine. Defeat again at home for us. And I think we are in for relegation scrap, lads. We're 15th, so currently comfortably away from the relegation zone position-wise. But there's only four points to Rotherham in 22nd. <gasps> Fleet would have got another point. Well done, lads. There's only four points to Rotherham. But equally, oh, there's only four points, three points to Reading in 8th. The playoffs are starting to eke away, though. But a good... I think all it takes is one good run. All it takes is one good run. Where are Millwall in the table? Is this the one that we sim or Reading the team that we sim? Ah, Millwall are 10th and Reading are 8th. There's not really much difference, is it? Is there? This one's at home, so we'll sim this one. We'll sim this one. I'll make some changes. Oh, the entire back line are tired, apparently. Uh, we'll put McLaughlin in there. Elder can come out for... Where are you? Fleming and Greaves can come in. Yordi Device. And we'll have a quick sim. What's well, interactive match sim? I, I clicked the wrong one. Never mind. Interactive match sim then against Millwall. Let's see what we can do in this game. Hopefully get three points. Free kick. Free kick. Free kick. Good position. Jump in we go. It's a bit further out than it looked. Is this a goal scoring chance for Leonardo Pinto? Who has the best free kicks? Oh, definitely Pinto. Come on. Come on, please. Time's yellow. Oh, what a stop from the keeper. Unbelievable save. That was up and dipping. And at the last moment, he's got his hand to it. How dare you? Oh, what a free kick. What a save. Yo, he's done it again. Oh, I thought from the corner we might be able to get it. But Biankowski with a save. Maybe this time. No, I don't like their goalkeeper. Bielkowski can get back on the coach and go back to London now if he likes. Come on, lads, please. This is good football. Can it end in a goal? Pinto's there. Pinto's there. Oh, play it. Burn it. No, oh, Bielkowski. God, I hate him so much. Still nil-nil here against Millwall. We're still on for a point and a clean sheet. And they haven't really threatened us yet. But the longer we go without scoring, the more likely it is that we won't get anything from the game because they'll score. Please. Oh, he's offside. No, this is going to be a goal, isn't it? Oh, he's shot wide. Brrr. Oh, he's offside as well. Okay, that helps. Flick that on, Pinto. Come on. Play McGuinness in. Josh McGuinness. Out to Lewis Potter. Back to Fleming. McGuinness. <gasps> Pinto! Off the post! God, Jesus! It's exhausting! Yes! Malik Wilkes! Oh, Jesus, this is emotionally exhausting. Oh, Jesus Christ. Malik Wilkes was the one with the late goal against Cardiff we mentioned earlier. And now we've equalised again. Not equalised. We've won the game against Millwall with a late goal through Malik again. <sighs> Just what we deserve. Just what we needed. Up to 11th. Although we've played a game more than some of the sides below us, actually. Actually, only two. Only two. So we could only drop as low as 13th. Right. Into the next one. Let's go and play Reading. Some unintentional good news. Uh, it's a day later when I'm recording this end part of the video to the first part of the video. In the meantime, I've been able to see some feedback on the previous episode. Or one of the previous episodes. With you guys with a very big amount of thumbs up on uh, the comment with over 160 thumbs up saying that we should look to sign Roman Bayard, the French regen, and transfer him from a right back to a centre back. Six foot three, good jumping stat at 75 as well, and obviously quick enough to play in the defensive role. That looks like it could be a phenomenal option from you guys. So I am going to right now approach to sign this guy and transfer him to centre back. On top of this, uh, there's been some feedback about what to do with the striking role. And it does appear to be... Oh, sporadic would suit me down to the ground as well. Uh, it would appear that five years, this is going even better than we initially thought. Um, that feedback being potentially we could look to sell McGuinness in January and sign a new striker to start ahead of Charlie Barnett, who isn't as reliable as a goal scorer as we might well have hoped that he might be at the beginning of 
uh, this second season. Bayar is in. I will now change. It shouldn't take too long to change him to a centre back. 72 weeks! Well, there goes that plan. Oh, 72 weeks to change him to a centre back. Are you sure, game? He's already got centre back in his positions. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Let me try changing him to a to a different position that's going to take not long at all. And then maybe we can change him to a centre back from there that might take less time. That's odd. At the very least, his stats do suggest that he would be good at centre back. And he does have centre back in his roles. So I can utilise him there, even though his default position won't actually be centre back. That's really strange. Very strange indeed. Regardless, let's head into this game against Reading. Let me know what you think about that feedback in the comment section down below. Do we sell Josh McGuinness in January and sign a new striker for the first team? There was some concern and very valid concern that this was kind of morphing into a youth only career mode where we were kind of focusing so much on the youth that uh, we weren't signing any real life players outside of obviously the free signing of Cyrus Christie, which ordinarily would be fine. But I am planning on doing a youth-only career mode later down the line. Meaning that we should probably steer away from the youth scouts quite so heavily now that we've already got six or seven first-team players or first-team squad players that are regens to ensure that we don't kind of just have a repeat of this series when we do the youth-only series later in the year. That series will probably be the one after the one after this one rather than bounce from this RTG to that RTG. Probably do a shorter series with a bigger team in between. So uh, that's the plan. I'll probably mention that at the beginning of the next episode rather than three quarters of the way through this one. But here's their starting lineup, as you see. Raphael, uh, Yadom, Tuimola, Liam Moore, the captain, and uh, Omar Richards at left back. A 4-2-3-1 for them. Joao is in good form and one of the best uh, strikers in this season so far for Reading. Hopefully, though, we can keep him quiet. Hopefully, Charlie Barnett can get a goal or two to continue his growth. And we'll have to wait and see if we can get back-to-back -back victories after that win against Millwall very late on in the Sims game before we headed to this one. Oh, Josh Emmanuel couldn't quite get in the way of that. And Ajaria is in here. I have to be wary of him getting it back. Rimonota finds Joao. Oh, he's going to find Rinomota again. And Reading lead by a goal to Lille in the ninth minute. I was more concerned with the pass to the right. I didn't even see the give and go from Rinomota. And unfortunately, Reading have taken advantage of that. He gives it there, and I bring the defender across to try and close down. And I was more worried about the pass to the number seven. Hadn't given Rinomota a second thought, and unfortunately, that's what's cost me there. Played back to him, and a tidy finish. And we trail by a goal to nil. I was hoping to get back-to-back -back wins after that game against Millwall to try and shoot us up the table. We've got a mountain to climb now away from home in the Medeski. We might not get those back-to-back -back wins. I certainly hope we do, but we'll have to wait and see. Honeyman into Pinto, across the Doherty, forward to Charlie Barnett. Options arriving, that will reach Honeyman, and out to Lewis Potter. He's been a great source of goals for us this season. Oh, but I've just put too much power on that shot, trying to find that far corner. Great, he's got great movement, he's got the space to try and work the angle, or has worked the angle. And then, oh, dearie me, just powered it. A cross goal a little bit too much, trying to squeeze it in that far side. I wanted to make sure it. I didn't put too little power on it, that he hit it too central. In the end, I feel it too much, said he's hit it too high. That's really frustrating. Aston Villa on 43 points at the top of the table and flying so far this season. I don't see them dropping too much points either, Lee Dixon. I think, as we mentioned in the title of the episode a couple of days ago, uh, the league title might well already be decided, but we'll wait and see how things transpire throughout the rest of the year. But they appear to be doing a Liverpool from last year, uh, Aston Villa, in this save right now. So we'll wait and see how that title fight goes. But I think one of the automatic spots is already beyond anybody else, let alone us, already beyond anybody else at this early stage with Aston Villa's form. It would take a monumental collapse Oh, again, the little reverse pass. Brilliant save by George Long to keep us in the game. That could very well sway things in our favour. That might be the deciding moment that dictates how the rest of this game pans out and how the result ends up. 
Lewis Potter driving down the line. If we can score on the back of that chance for them, that would be huge for us. Into Doherty. Quickly looking forward there for Barnett. To Doherty again. Malik Wilkes is out wide. He's got options inside and around the outside, but I can't power into the space. Half an hour played. Still 1-0 Reading. Oh, Joshua Manuel's won that back in a very good position. Malik Wilkes is there. And we'll just loft this into the middle. And it might reach Barnett. It hasn't. Get that back quickly there to Doherty. And here's Honeyman and Lewis Potter around the outside. Oh, sliced it wide. Trying to close him down. Drawn the player out of position at least. Nice tackle by Honeyman. That's going to be their throw, is it? Or are we going to keep that in? We've done well. I see Doherty just... Oh, that was not where the ball was supposed to go. It was supposed to go to Doherty. who's just stood there free on his own. Joao, I see the runner there that I'm wary of now. Oh, Elder. No, you've headed it straight to Mete. I tried to head it away to head it away out of the box forwards and he's flicked it backwards which has taken it straight to Mete. There's so much room there to head that towards Doc. Ah, oh, maybe it was just out of his reach and he wasn't able to do it. The height on the cross just eluding him. That's a hell of a finish first time on the half volley. Not really much George Long can do about that. That's Reading 2 Hull City nil, and that might well in the 57th minute be the final nail in our coffin on this particular match date. We might find ourselves in that relegation scrap this season. Alternatively, if we're able at some point to get that run of back-to-back -back wins for three or four games, we could fly up the table. I do not know whether this is going to be a going up season, a going down season, or a, we're just going to stay in the championship season. Oh, I was waiting for a turn inside that didn't come, and then when it did come, I think they tackle tackling they trying to deal with Joao. Want it back. There is still 20 minutes to go in this game. There is still the chance of some form of comeback. Pinto forward to Charlie Barnett. I've got the support here from Honeyman. And Lewis Potter is about to get on his bike. Ready? There we go. The afterburners are on. And Lewis Potter is in behind here. Yodom trying to close me down. Just need to find a pass to a teammate that we can get a shot away with. Charlie Barnett trying to work the space himself. Barnett on his left foot. Good save at... Full stretch from Raphael. Actually, that's Barnett's last action as McGuinness now comes on. Dave Gunn also coming on as well for Pinto. McGuinness off the bench. Just at the right time to perhaps try and get a goal with him from a corner, which was his pro almost main source of goals last year. Doherty will bring that down. I say bring it down. It wasn't the best of touches, was it? Lewis Potter has got a good dribbling to get that across here to Wilkes, who's on his left foot. But despite a good first turn, couldn't work the space to get the shot away. And I fear that we are going to lose this by two goals to nil. Or maybe three goals to nil. And at the very least, two goals to one. I don't think there's going to be enough time to get two goals back unless we score now. We would have to score now on this breakaway attack. Yadom is trying to close Lewis Potter down. Potter appears to have the legs on him. So we'll deliver the ball in towards the back post where Malik Wilkes is there and he's at the base of the post. It's not to be our day today. It is not to be three points or probably even one for us at the Medeski. Reading are going to get the win here. <sighs> Such is the way of things for us this season. Final whistle sounds at the Medeski and it's a 2-0 defeat. Unfortunately for us away from home. So... That new signing might well be very welcome if he can come in and give us extra defensive boosts. Leeds beat Fleetwood, who continually flounder at the bottom of the table, but we're not necessarily doing too well at staying above water ourselves. 14th is where we end today's episode. Uh, on 20 points, so five points above Brentford in the drop zone. Brentford, do I think we play tomorrow? Or is it Bristol City? It's Bristol City. It's Bristol City, Middlesbrough, Aston Villa and Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, certainly we'll be playing the Villa game as they continually lead the way at the top of the table. Are any of the others down at the bottom? Fleetwood High School, Brentford. Oh, Bristol City are actually the lowest of the lowest of the other, lowest of the rest of the side. So maybe we start tomorrow with that with that Bristol City game. We'll sim that and then play the other, the other games against the uh, higher ranked opposition but Aston Villa with 15 wins from their opening 16 games so far continually that top spot looks like it's completely gone oh dearie me 
Right, that'll be all for today's episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Do let me know your feedback in the comment section continually. And like I say, I'll mention what I mentioned at the end, at the beginning of the next episode here, to uh, ensure that we get as many eyeballs and ear holes on it as possible to get a maximum amount, maximum amount of feedback. But we're not too far off. All it's going to take is one solid run of three or four back-to-back -back wins and we will fly. Maybe November can be the month that that happens. Join me tomorrow and see if that is the way that things transpire. I'll see you then.